I figured since I got a resin obsession at the moment, I'm going to make myself a light box. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I've just bought a whole heap of art resin and this will be the first time I get to use it. I'll be using different coloured inks for this pour, so I need to put some resin into some smaller cups, that way I can add in the ink. So this is the first time I'm making art out of resin like this. I figured I'd just pour some lines, get all the colours to blend and hope for the best. Now I'm just going to take a hairdryer and spread these colours around. This works really well because it heats the resin up as well and that helps it flow. I decided I wanted some extra colour in the middle, so I just poured an extra line of blue and now I'm just going to spread it around. So now I'm pretty happy with my finished product, I'm just going to let that dry overnight and I'll come back to it tomorrow. Now I'm just going to pour some clear resin over the top to make it about a quarter of an inch thick. As always, grab your blowtorch, run it over the top. This will bring the bubbles to the surface and it'll get rid of them. I've let that dry overnight and it's time to take it out of the mould. With these silicon moulds, it comes off real easy. As much as I like resin, I love woodworking even more. So I'm going to take this Tassie oak I'm going to cut some miters on the ends and I'm going to make a box to house the panel. I'm setting the blade height to about 4mm, that way I can cut a groove to accept the panel. Now I'm just cutting some rabbits, that way I can fit in the back piece. Give it a quick sand and it's time to glue it all together. I've already slotted the panel in here, it was a bit of a pain to line up but I got there in the end. To hold it all together I'm just going to grab one of these picture framing straps. They're really handy, they're cheap to buy and they work really well. So I've already cut my back panel to size and now I'm just going to put a hole in it so I can run the wire for the LEDs. While the glue was drying I took the opportunity to pour some more clear over the top. I had a couple of imperfections that I weren't happy with and this fixes it right up. You can see here how effective the blowtorch is against the bubbles. I got one of these meter long LED light strips. It's the color changing ones, you can set the speed and the color and all that kind of stuff. Now I'm just going to feed it through the hole and because my backing is like shiny it doesn't stick too well so I'm just going to take some clear tape and tape it down. It's all nice and dry now so I'm going to take it out of the clamp, give it a quick sand and start applying some finish. I wanted to try something a little different, so I'm going to take this charcoal stain. I haven't really used it before, so I'm interested to see how it turns out. I think the stain turned out quite well. I was expecting it to be a bit darker though. To seal the stain, I'm just going to use some wipe on poly and I've got this one in clear satin. I made sure that I used painters tape to cover this resin up. 
I've used clear tape in the past and I've found it just leaves marks on the resin. So the last thing to do is to put the back piece on. I've drilled four holes there, I'm just going to put in four screws. That way if I ever have any dramas with the LEDs, I can easily unscrew it and swap them out. Now it's time to plug it in and see if it works. This box really comes to life when the lights go out. If you like this build, give me a big thumbs up, it really helps me out a lot. If it's your first time here and you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. I put new how to and build videos out every couple of weeks. And if you want to see sneak peeks of upcoming projects, check out my Facebook and my Instagram pages. Well that's all for this week's episode, I hope you enjoyed this one. Take care and I'll see you next time.